Good evening, good evening, and welcome to the Let's Talk Destiny talk show. I am your host, Jamie Green. And first, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, where you will find lots and lots of powerful testimonies and stories of individuals who understand the concept of purpose and how to walk in their destiny. So go on over there and just subscribe to the channel, and I promise you won't regret it. This month, our theme is um, the gift of purpose. The month of December, people uh, talk a lot about giving gifts, receiving gifts, um, and so forth. But I personally have come to the point in my life where I believe the greatest gift that you can give yourself is knowing and understanding your purpose. Not worrying about what other people think, what other people's opinions are, but walking in your purpose. So tonight I am honored to have one of my sister friends with me, a fellow author, um, to talk about the gift of purpose and her journey to fulfilling her purpose. Tonight, I welcome to the platform, author Sharon Blunt. She is a Open, uh, thank you. She is an Oakland, California native, and she currently resides in California. She writes romance with a touch of humor. And you know I love the humor part. Um, Sharon recently published her debut novel, which is entitled Espresso Serve with Love, which won her two awards. And let me tell you, that book is fire. I loved it. I loved it. I can't wait for to see what's going to happen next um, with those characters. But I invited Sharon, and I'm so glad that she um, agreed to come to talk with me tonight for a few minutes because I have been connected to her on social media for a long time and I've watched her grow and mature and just coming to herself. And I am just so excited to see what she's doing and where she is going. So tonight I welcome you to the platform, Ms. Sharon Black. Hello, thank you for your well, warm welcome. I appreciate it. Thanks for the invite to you. Absolutely. So just tell us a little bit about sharing. Like, what do you like to do? What are some of your hobbies? What makes you smile? Oh, what makes me smile? Two things. My son, when I when he talks or say mama, because my son's autistic, he doesn't always talk. So when he says little words, that makes me smile or he gives me a hug. That makes me smile. Yes. Little things, <laughs> little things like that. Um, my hobbies. Um, I love doing makeup. I love doing hair. And I love little things like that. <laughs> Makes me happy. Good. And it's important, it's important for us to find what gives us joy, what gives us peace. We spend entirely too much time, um, too much time of our life journey trying to figure out, you know, to what do other people think I should be doing. Um, and I tried this for a minute and then I don't like it. And then somebody's saying, well, yeah, you need to come over here and try this. And so I, I'm just excited for you that number one, you know what makes you happy and you are doing these things. Um, yeah. Do you it took remember? a while to find it though. It took a while. Oh yeah. And we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, do you remember a point in your life journey where you had a dream or a vision inside of you that you wanted to birth, but you aborted that or you put it to the side because of someone or something else? Oh, yes. I have always wanted to be a writer. Always. Always, always wrote little stories when I was younger. And as I got older, I am dyslexic. So writing has not been easy for me. So when you still want to live in your purpose and want to write and you have those those dreams, oh, I'm gonna be a published author. And then you submit, you submit your three, three um chapters to an editor. I had an editor tell me, you just need not to write. Oh, wow. Stop writing, just promote authors. And then it, I stopped writing because you get tore down from the, some people don't know how to give critiques without tearing someone down. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I stopped for years. I stopped writing. And that is interesting because I met you, I connected with you on social media 
as a person who promotes authors, as a person who promotes uh, books. Mm -hmm. And I often wondered, because I can't remember how many years we have been connected, but I often wondered what a person that has so much love and appreciation for uh, the written word and who um, understands so much about the literary world, I often mm -hmm. wondered why you weren't writing books. Um, and then I said, well, maybe she doesn't want to write books. Some people are happy uh, promoting mm -hmm. other people. And you know, every year you give out awards to people. I mean, I just, I've been seeing that for the longest time. So when I mm -hmm. found out that you had um, published a novel, I was like, oh my goodness, I have to get that book. So you. your challenge um, with regard to writing was the dyslexia. Yes. Now yeah. let me ask you and, this question. Were you diagnosed mm -hmm. with that um, or is that something you just learned uh, on your own? Oh no, I was diagnosed with that at the age of five. Okay. I, so I've had it all of my life. And it, it's, it has been challenging, especially with writing, especially with writing. Even though I love the written word, it was hard to write. So I, I kept reading instead of um, honing in on trying to write better because all it takes you can have 10 people encourage you that you can do it but it takes one bad comment to tear it down and you stop and that's what happened with me that is so true wow mm -hmm. that is absolutely true um and so currently do you feel like you are fulfilling your purpose or you're on the road to your destiny what you believe you were called to do I'm on my, I'm on the road to do it because I've denied it for so long and didn't have the confidence within myself to go ahead and write. Yeah. Oh, it, it just, it took a long time. Even when I published the first book, it took me almost two years to get the second book out because I lost, lost the encouragement to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what if I can't do good? I second guess myself. So I'm definitely on the road to seeing myself into a better journey and enjoying it because if you don't enjoy it it defeats the purpose absolutely absolutely so I enjoy it. I enjoy every minute even the uh, I have to say the uh criticism uh, how can I say this I want to make sure I say it right people who come to you like I love it but this I didn't like yeah yeah but overall I love the book and, and it being being able to accept it yes exactly mm -hmm. Because this is the, one of the things that I had to learn, um, Sharon, is that people can support your vision, mm -hmm. but people can't really see your vision because it's not their vision. Yes. So they're looking from their point of view. So they're never going to see it exactly as you see it. And so I have like been really, uh, maybe hard to believe, but mm -hmm. I have always been really sensitive. Um, okay. And I grew up feeling like, um, I wasn't as good as other people or, um, you know, it's a whole nother story, but I felt like if I did something and somebody even acted like they didn't even have to say they rejected it, but if I felt they rejected it, I would withdraw into myself and just yes. say, forget it. Um, yes. And, yep. And I, I have had, and I do that a lot. I do that a lot, but I have to, I have to say my mentor, she has helped me and stopped me. Stop. Take a couple of deep breaths. Yes. And keep, and keep going. You, you, she always tell me you may have issues with grammar, but you know how to tell a story like no other. You are a good plotter and keep going. Right. And keep going. That, that was my worst. Um, I call it self self-hate at some times or because you could be your worst enemy. Absolutely. Absolutely. You could be your worst enemy. And I, for a while I was my own worst enemy when it became for, um, when it came to writing, I'm like, I can't write like Brenda Jackson exactly. or I can't write like Rochelle, some of my favorite authors, but guess what? I'm Sharon Blunt. I'm not Brenda. Right. I'm not That's Rochelle. Correct. So I had to go back and start learning how to be okay with my writing. I love it. I love yeah. it. So I believe that each of us um, is created with unique talents and unique abilities and characteristics, personalities, what have mm -hmm. you. 
what would you say are maybe two of your strongest character traits that keep you going even in times when you just say, forget it, I'm done. And you may mean it when you say it, but mm -hmm. something makes you get back up and start over again. What, how mm -hmm. would you define that? There's two, there's a few things. One, my son, I look at him. He is, he is my ultimate inspiration All right. for me because he's autistic and my son is still doing things that people said he couldn't do. He could, they said he wouldn't be able to talk. He wouldn't be able to communicate. He wouldn't be able to walk. And he's, he has, an, has excelled. So when I want to give up and I do, I can't do it. I can't figure it out. Yeah. I'm over it. I'm done writing. I'm done. This is not going the way I thought it would go. Um, I look at myself I'm like, you know what, Sharon? What what are you accomplishing by giving up? Yeah. What 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 actually am I? Who am I hurting? I'm not hurting the other people who keep going, who That's keeps right. writing. I'm hurting myself and um, denying my dream. Absolutely. And my purpose of things I want to do. So I even though there's sometimes I want to give up and try to give up, like this is not it. Yeah. I. Something always say, you know what? Get back on up, get back up on, get back up and try again because you're not going to get everything the first time. Right. Yeah. That's it's how we have to make fun. adjustments. Yeah, but yeah. um, we have to keep going. And Andrew, how old is he now? He's 15. Yeah, he's a big I, boy now. <laughs> I'm trying to, re I'm, I'm trying to remember when I first connected with you, but he was a little boy, and yeah. you always refer to him as little man. And he became everybody on social media's little man. And yes. <laughs> we were always asking, how's little man doing? How's little man doing? Yeah. Um, and I, I just can't believe he's 15. And he is talking. And he is definitely inspiration for moving beyond the boundaries that people have set for you. Yes. Yes. And I look at him and I'm like, you know what? If he can get out there and do it, I have no excuse to not do it. Yes, that's powerful. Even though I make them up. <laughs> I make them up sometimes. When I <laughs> yeah, I, trust me, I know. Sometimes you just sit down and you say, okay, that's enough of this. I am not doing this. And then yes. that passion that you have for mm -hmm. it, the reason why yeah. you started it in the first place, it kicks in and you're like, okay, well, I'll try it one more time. Yes. And then you go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. um, you have shared with us, Sharon, some extremely uh, powerful and transparent moments in your life. And I haven't maybe said much to you um, as you were sharing these things, but you have inspired me um, on so many occasions with your stick to itiveness. And wow. I remember you talking about being homeless and mm -hmm. um, as a single mom, um, I remember not being able to provide for my, my sons the things that I wanted and all of that that comes along with that. But you kept going. Can you share just a little bit of that piece of your journey and how you ended up in Georgia? Wow. <laughs> I have now officially been in Georgia for three years, but getting here was no joke. I, I lived in California most of my life. I'm actually born, I was born in Trinidad and Tobago. So, yes. <laughs> so wow. when, I was about, when I was about two years old, we migrated here to, not here, but to California. So I'm in California, I'm doing well. And then I found myself in an abusive relationship. And then it seems like after that, it, things just kept trickling down, trickling down. And before I knew it, rent was going up. It became so unaffordable and I became homeless. It's very quickly. Yeah. And I couldn't rehouse. There was nothing in the world for getting me to rehouse. And we, I stayed in California for a few months because I didn't want to, with kids with autism, change is not easy. And I didn't want to change up his whole, um, his whole living. Yeah. All he knew was that school. All he knew was this area. So I tried to stay and do the best. And once that was not happening, I was like, you know what? I can't do this. I can't be homeless anymore. And it came down to having to give him up. I had, um, sorry, 
I had okay. to. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, pr I'm very proud of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I had to, I said, okay, I can't do it. We're living in my car. I cannot let my son continue to live like this anymore. And I set up to put him into foster care until I can get myself together. And that day they were coming to get him. He said, mama, please, please. They were taking him. And that day I took my son and I was like, okay, I got to leave here. I can't leave my son. I can't let this be our journey. And I got in my car, went to my storage, got what I can get and drove all the way from California to Georgia. Wow. And that's how I got here. It took days. It took, we had a lot of bumps in the road to get here from California to Georgia, but uh, it, I was not, I was determined not to lose my child into a system. Cause once they're in a system, it's really kind of hard to get your child back. Get them out. Yeah. Yep. So I didn't want that. I couldn't bear the thought of my son needing me and I couldn't help him. Yeah. I drove and I was, I was a woman who was scared to drive on the freeway. I was scared, but I, I don't know what happened once I was determined to find a better place, way for me and him, all that fear left. Every last bit of it. I drove 3,000 miles. Wow. 3,000 miles. It took five days because I don't drive at night, but we got here. Not See, one incident. This is why I wanted you to share your story because there will be somebody listening to this uh, conversation, a mother who's on the verge of giving up. And these are very challenging times right now. And I talk to people every day who just say, I can't do it anymore. I'm tired. And so I want to have conversations with, with mothers and women and individuals such as yourself who say, I'm not even 100% sure where I got the strength from. I just know I had to do what I had to do to keep my baby. And I am so proud of you. And I, I you mm -hmm. inspired me. I've said this earlier, like down through the years, I've, I've listened to you share your story, even um, times when uh, you look, you thought the people that would have your back didn't have your back. Mm -hmm. And you would share that part, that hurt and that pain, which you know me, I'm all about transparency um, and honesty, but you never, ever quit. You no. might sit down for a few, for a little mm -hmm. while and regroup and, you know, but you kept going and I am so proud of you. I want to publicly say that again. Oh my God, I am very, you. very proud of you. Thank you, girl. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. There's nothing to be sorry about. Like, this is what um, these conversations are about. This is why I wanted to do this talk show because I don't want to interview people. I don't want to just ask questions. You answer the question. I want to have real heart to heart conversations. And I remember when I first came up with this idea that I wanted to do this uh -huh. and I talked to my two sons and my sister, a couple of other family members. And I'm like, I really want to do an online virtual talk show. And they were like, well, go ahead and do it. And then I started, what happened was I started looking at some other people that were doing it and uh -huh. saying, oh no, I can't do it because I don't have what they have. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have the lighting. I don't have the banners. I don't have, you know, I try. And so my son said to me, he said, when people tune into your show, they're not going to tune in for banners and lights. They're no, going they're to tune in for content. So and you have matters. to make sure that you are bringing to people something that touches their heart and something that will help uplift them. And they will tune in. Yes, they will. Yeah. So, I'm proud of you too. <laughs> thank you. So I started, I said, well, I'll give it a try um, and see what happens. And so far, um, I've been very blessed to have people such as yourself who say to me, um, I, I would be honored to come on the show. Because honestly, I have asked some people and been told no. Yeah. I have asked some people and been told um, I don't do 
uh, shows, like I have to get paid X amount of dollars yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. So, okay, well, this is not a show for you, sweetie, because I'm just, <laughs> uh, I'm just getting started here. And I remember, I want to share this with you also. Um, I remember I had this urge to ask Beverly Jenkins and Tina McElroy Anza, would they be on the show? And there are other best-selling authors um, that I interact with personally on social media for mm -hmm. years. And I asked them and they wouldn't do it. So when I got this urge to ask these two, I'm thinking, first of all, I don't have any personal one on you know, contact with them. Um, like, why would they come? You know, like, who am I? Like, why would they come here? So I reached out to them because like, you, all you can do is say yes or no. Yeah, and I reached out to Miss Beverly, and then I reached out to Queen Tina, and both of them immediately said, "Sure." Miss right. Beverly said, "I'm I'm working on a deadline right now. Give me a couple months. Get back in touch with me. We'll make it work." Miss Tina said, "Sure. Give me a couple of days, and we'll make it happen." And I literally sat and just stared at the messages because somewhere down inside of me, I thought they were going to say no. Yeah. Like, I think that's what we do to ourselves. Let's let's prepare ourselves so it won't hurt so much when it, if the no comes. Exactly. Yeah. And so I had someone say to me, um, someone inboxed me that I don't even know. And they said, I see that you are um, announcing that you're going to have uh, Beverly Jenkins and Tina McElroy Anza on your show. And I want to say, first of all, I'm surprised that they said yes to you. Um, because you're nobody, like, you know, nobody oh. knows who you are. This is exactly what she said to me. She said, but here's the other thing. I'm just going to make a suggestion to you. These ladies are used to being interviewed um, by people like Oprah. And um, like, so I recommend, this is what she said to me. I recommend that you watch some Oprah Winfrey interviews um, before you, you know, have them on your show so that you can do some good interviews. Mm. So I took a few minutes to get myself together and, <laughs> and I responded, I am totally aware, number one, that I'm not Oprah, um, have absolutely no desire to be Oprah. And these queens knew who I was when they said yes. Amen. So if they're okay with it, you don't even need to worry about it. Yeah. So, of course, when both of them were on the show, I told them about that um, conversation and they were disturbed that somebody would say something like that. But you have to, like, just say to yourself, you may not see something inside of you, Sharon, mm -hmm. but somebody else sees it. Because both Miss Beverly and Tina um, said things to me, spoke, encouraged me to me. Um, that I didn't even see about myself. Like the way I, you know, my, my sense of humor, a lot of people mm -hmm. say, oh my God, you're so funny. And I don't see it at all. Yeah. Like I just say stuff. And then when people laugh, I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even think I'm joking. <laughs> but there's something in you also that people are drawn to and attracted to. And you don't ever have to try to be anybody but Sharon Blunt. Thank you. I appreciate your words. Thank you. Absolutely. So what's next for you? Oh my goodness. What's next? As in writing, I am, well, I'll give you an exclusive since we're talking, but um, I'll first start with my writing. I just released uh, Mocha Kisses. That's the follow-up to All right. Espresso, Serve with Love. I'm getting a lot of positivity around it. They love it. I I'm so excited. I'm so excited about it. I'm writing this down because I have to get a copy. Oh, I'm I'm gonna gift you a copy, a paperback. Oh, thank yes, you. I'm gonna gift you a paperback. So remind, give me your email, not email, your physical address, address and okay. I will mail you a copy. Awesome. Um that book is coming. I also have another book coming out on the 21st of this month. It's a short story. It's called Picture Perfect Christmas. All right. So I'm excited. Um, you rolling right along yes I don't want to stop and give myself too much time to think like can I do it I, I can't do it so I tell myself I can do it and keep on going 
That's awesome. Yeah, shit. and keep on going. Yeah. So I have an exclusive. Um, I used to do events and I kind of just stopped and then COVID hit. So everybody had to stop. So now I'm deciding to reinvent the event. Re- I'm renaming it. I'm doing it, doing it again, adding mental health into it as well to help. Because I think with our community, we don't talk about it enough. Absolutely. And if we don't talk about it enough and care about our, ourselves and our communities, nothing will ever change and get better. So I'm changing it to, it's called a celebration of excellence. It'll, uh-huh. it'll be, yeah, 2023, not next year, because COVID is still around. <laughs> and, and I don't know why people don't believe that, but it is. Yeah, Mm-mm. I'm not taking any chances with it. So um, I'm excited awesome. about that. You have my first exclusive. Oh yes, my goodness. I haven't told anybody. So oh my God. I'm excited about it. Yes, I'm very, very much excited about it. That's awesome. And please keep me up to date. Um, anything I can do to help, like, you know, okay. even with advertisement or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm still working, trying to get my format together and whatever, because there are people such as yourself who are doing amazing things. And I want to figure out a way to help advertise those things and you know make sure people are aware of what's going on because we you know we support a whole bunch of other people um mm-hmm. we need to learn how to support ourselves yes and, and um, so sure. i definitely want to please keep me posted and updated i will i will i hope you can join us i hope I you can would join love us. to i would okay, love to we, have, we definitely have to talk absolutely okay all right. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us before you leave? Uh, yes. I want to tell anybody who, it doesn't matter if you want to write, if you want to do do whatever your calling is, don't give up. Don't get in yourself, get in your head and mess up the blessings that are coming to you. Your blessings will not look like somebody else. Yeah. They won't look like anybody else. They'll look. Your blessings will be just for you, catered to you. Don't give up keep going. Even when you get criticism that is not good, not the constructive criticism, take that criticism and roll with it and become better. Just don't give up because that's when you let them win. Wow. And you become you become the winner if you don't give up. Absolutely. And thank you once again for the invite. I had such a great time. Oh, my goodness. Thank, Thank you, you so much for spending some time with me this evening. Um, number one, I know you're an author and you're busy and you're an entrepreneur and you're a single mother. And there's a lot of other things you could be doing right now. So spending this time with me really means a lot to me. I genuinely appreciate it. And as I said, I'm so proud of you because I pay attention to um, people's struggles when they share mm-hmm. them because there's too many people faking like they're okay there's nothing wrong I'm mm-hmm. wonderful and then the next thing you hear boom they're gone because they yeah. couldn't take all the pressure so I, I pay attention and I pray for people even when I don't say anything to you I'm praying for you mm-hmm. and I'm praying for I was gonna say little man but I can't say that anymore <laughs> I'm praying for Andrew and I'm just so proud of how far you've come and you have so much more to offer and I look forward to everything that you have to give thank you very much i appreciate it all right give us some contact information um before we go okay you can contact me on facebook author sharon blunt i have a like page and a regular um facebook page you can also contact me on twitter at coffee brat with two t's so yeah coffee then brat (laughs) tt then you can again you can contact me at uh what is the other one called IG at Coffee Brat. Yep, at Coffee Brat, one T. Or you can email me at Sharon L. Blunt at gmail.com. Awesome. And I, again, I thank you so much for spending time with me this evening. You really uplifted me and encouraged me and reminded me to stay focused on my purpose. And this, this month, you have given me a very special gift. And that is the gift of your presence here on my humble platform. So thank you so much. I genuinely appreciate you. And we will get together in the new year. Okay, thank you. Right, God bless you. Love you. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.